<laughs> oh, shoot, our co fans. <laughs> oh, it's good. It's your main man, Master Cell. Leave the Master Nice at the round table. It could be once. It's got to the spin. Well, truth be told, I wasn't exactly at the house at 11 o'clock. The delay was. Damn. Delay to 1225. I still didn't even show up until like 1231. Easy did came out kind of time with Matter. The second I was done watching Alia, it came out. Even though I had to push this episode watch back in about 30 minutes to do a video about Alia. But this is Oshinoko, Season 2, Episode 9. And as I said in my earlier video, this it, we entered the double digits. 10, 11, 12, if this show had 12 episodes this season, because last season was only like 11. We have reached the final stretch, the whole uh, third quarter, the tail end of this season. And, but in fair, next month it is like... And typically in something like this, a show needs to find something that could evolve a huge conflict around for its final episodes to gear towards a big conclusion. And Oceano Co. has done so, excuse me, not just to skip to the end, but apparently Himakawa and Aqua share the same father. Not to mention the same father as Ruby. Isn't that funny? All this DNA stuff he was trying to get, all this info he'd be trying to get from everybody, blah, blah, blah. Simply that comes from the people backstage, people in charge, people have had of everything, which I thought we was why we was talking to Kadachi in the first place. But nah, this time he was doing it to his cast members. What about everybody besides Kana and Akawe? Akawe, Akane. Kana and Akane. What is my speech right now? And even with the plan that Himakawa ended up helping Aqua with, or trying to get Kendashi drunk, and enough for him to tell his backstory, spill his backstory out there. With him not being Aqua's target, wow. Inadvertently, Himakawa, you just played right into Aqua's hands. Especially with all of us thinking that <laughs> Aqua needed to get close to one of these guys in charge, thinking that Kendashi was the target. Dang. Damn, Aqua. I did some Death Note vibes. <laughs> to be fair, Aqua did have to have easily had something confirmed there. Maybe he thought Kandashi was close enough to him as a father figure, as he said in the past, because Himikawa had uh, indeed revealed that it was Kandashi who brought him out of that children's home and raised him to be the actor he is right now. However, that means he was an orphan at first, and he Kandashi was indeed not his father, as in indeed not Aqua's target. Maybe at the same time, the cards fell in the right place and all the pawns was put into the right positions. No spoilers, but hopefully Himakawa knows a little something about his father for Aqua to be able to run with and for the rest of the season, if not season 3. Also, I know I'm late on this, but apparently the Ocean of Cold manga is in this final stretch, this final saga, starting last June. So I'm guessing, maybe, you know, I don't want to make that guess, let's talk about the episode. I said the wrong thing on video, y'all want to spoil me to be correct. I know there's a pimple above my lip, it's not what you think it is, shut up. When it comes to the episode itself, again, a whole lot of Aqua, however, it was how he was getting into this emotional acting. And at the same time, we had a lot of different angles going into this scene where Aqua eventually does, well, he's supposed to snap. He is acting right now, it is a play. We had the advice that Connor gave him about him just going into that dark place, bringing out that emotion, AKA what, when he always fell sick and ill to his stomach when he thought about eyes, death. There's also what Gotanna said when he was pretty much, you can never enjoy acting if you're gonna take this route. And of course, him being haunted, Aqua being haunted by his past self, his doctor self with the glasses before he was killed himself. But the angle they went at here, kind of some both put those two things together and tried to have Aqua's old self come to a conclusion for Aqua's current self to deny. And here's why I like that. It's because like Aqua's old self was pretty much just like, so you thought you could have a good life, huh? You thought you could just have a regular life? You're just going to have a girlfriend? You're just going to go to school? You're just going to act? You're going to have friends? <laughs> Did you realize you're supposed to be doing something? Do you even deserve all that for not being able to save I's life? And well, as cliche as that is, Aqua and Pimp were just like, you're the old me. All the advice I was getting was pretty worked in a cut and dry sense for you. And Aqua didn't even explicitly be like, hey, that's not how this is. Yes, I can have this life. Yes, I can do all this. Even though I'm still trying to avenge I's death, I can still do all this together. Aqua was kind of just like, I'm not going to even justify on this. You're on bullshit. <laughs> still at the same time, accepting all those feelings of his past stuff, of everything that he has going on, just to be able to still do what he has to do. However, he's not just going to fall into the notion of not being able to enjoy acting and not have a regular life. But if nothing else, for the time being, he knows what he got to do. And I can say for real that if it wasn't for the awkward scenes going back and forth with the whole thing with I, I his former self, and his flashbacks, if we really just saw this fight play out as it played out in the play, yeah. Yeah. It was not one of those things where Aqua did his thing where this could easily have just been his own anime. 
Like, I wouldn't mind the OVA series of just this play about everything else involved. This play just being played out and this story just being played out as it is. Anybody want to actually watch Tokyo Blade? Just throwing that out there. And of course, they neglected to mention the whole time they were rehearsing the play because while they kept mentioning how Akane's character dies, they neglected to mention the part where she's able to come back to life, heal everybody, and there's some ritual going on where pretty much long story short, her, Akane's character doesn't die. It ends up being a somewhat happy ending with Aqua's character being happy that she's not died, dead, holding her in her arms and crying over her. However, the reason why Aqua's able to do this, he goes back to that dark place, but re it in another sense of what happened if I didn't die. Even playing that whole scene out as an I still just sitting there as if she was never stabbed, and Aqua was just like, maybe none of that happened. I just playfully talk about, oh, she didn't, she, I can't kill her. Having to run up to each other, hugging each other, while he's very much happy that I is still alive, but still in the back of his mind, he knows this isn't reality. Even mentally saying that he played the scene back a hundred times in his head. However, still able to go to that place and have that reaction that he knew he would have if I was still alive and do it right there and then on stage. And then we got to the mission of opening scene where I, Ruby, and Aqua was watching an old like back flashback to them watching the first stage thing, that stage acting job that Aqua ever had when he was that kid talking to that adult. It was nice to see. It's the same play where Aqua and Kana's life became intertwined forever. Aqua once mentioned he wanted to kill Kana during them times. How many times has Aqua had to go to that dark place for acting? Kana, you sure you want this man? <laughs> but yes, that is it. Tokyo Blade is done. And even montage you through the apparently next month of shows they have to have. I ain't gonna lie, the whole feeling about that kind of made this for anti -dramatic. And the reason I say that is because I, I, I do a thing where I try to fill in some blanks in between. And every time I do that, I kind of come like, why? To me, this would be much better if it was a one and done. And I know in general sense, when you're putting on a play and rehearse a play, you're not just going to do that play one time. People who make these plays that you see on TV, that play that was televised or blah, blah, blah. They've done those plays multiple times in different settings for different audiences, almost like a traveling group. And if not, they're doing it multiple nights in a row and row for people to come and see it over and over again. So yeah, I get it in reality. But my issue is, it's like, when you have these conversations with like Akane, with Kana, how they was talking with the people, Akane getting praised for her genius actor, even though she doesn't believe she is that and believes she could still do so much more, especially in comparison to Aqua and Kana, which brings her to tears. She's like Kana when she's pretty much exhausted from this and she wants to just relax for a while instead of doing these plays, but she's reminded by Kimchi that, or Kim Show, excuse me, <laughs> Kim Show, that they have to go back to the idol life after this and record a YouTube video. Kana looks at Akane in the hallway and kind of just bursts out all of a sudden, but now she's going to be, she's going to just try just as hard as so she has to do it anyway to be that top actor. And what criticize, I criticize this fight between them two as in it kind of at the same time went down to the position that they're both playing. While uh, Akane is next to the main character to play and Akane is pretty much the big woman in the play, when they're both across from each other and facing each other, Kana is pretty much a side character. And since we didn't see these plays go out time and time again, you have to assume that they're going to continue to do either A, the most acting they can, or B, as Kana has already described before, what needs to be done for the sake of the play. Like, I don't have any reason to believe that the, the Tokyo Blade that went out the way it went down these last couple of episodes is going to go down any different in any rerun of this play. Dan Verlin means Connor loses over and over and over and over and over again. Isn't that the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting a different result? Akane, Connor, y'all crazy. I do like the conversation that Kandashi had with the other old head out there. Excuse me if your name is a Kandashi, Rido, or you. Abiko, who did enjoy the play, or the producer, the script writer. I don't know who you are. It's been nine episodes, you haven't made your presence felt enough by now. <sighs> but somebody said that was actually rather true. <laughs> they said, you know how all these cute girls kind of just gravitate towards, towards us when you're in a position like this? It's because if you cast a bunch of cute girls together, they become even cuter off each other, and you make an even more cuter image. Not to just change the tone the, and the narrative, but what's better than one bad bitch? Too. We've seen plenty of music videos, especially in rap, where there's a whole bunch of bad bitches tricking and stuff like that. And if you don't see that, there's only a few bad bitches or one or two bad bitches. And let me tell you, from a guy who knows from experience, low budget. All I'm saying is, I peeped the game and heard it said here. Different terminology, different situation, but it rings true every time. Ocean Oko coming in with the facts yet again. 
Then did montage through the whole thing. The month was over. We had that end scene where everybody was bowing, congratulating themselves. You know, everybody was applauding, and it was officially done. Everybody is completely exhausted. However, people want to go out to drinks because, despite our main character cast for Ocean No Code, the average person that helped out in this play was indeed an adult. Now, a bunch of 16, 17 year olds running around. So, this shows a place that does indeed have drinks, was able to have everybody involved in the fun, which, long story short, is Korean barbecue. Or oh, Japanese barbecue. I'm not exactly sure how they do it over here. <laughs> Kana doesn't want to go, but Aqua said he wants to go, so Kana wants to go. That scene was kind of funny. Especially a bunch, bunch of flashback to older time scene where Kana was at there, <laughs> at there, and she was acting like she was drunk and she was blushing and, and talking, said being very talkative or complaining about things going on in the play. But that mental side note on the screen that said, no, this is just gender real. Because in no country right now in the United States, not even the United States, and anywhere in the world, Connor's not old enough to drink. Right? Say right. It really reminds me of like a lot of different shows, but the furthest I go back right now to say is actually Score Rumble. 20 years ago. Yacht. Dang. If that show wasn't considered a classic before. You know, I need, I, I need a Google search after this. And with everybody being happy about the thing, even Akane over there playing server, helping sure everybody is fed and happy, whatnot, and happy and whatnot. But that scene kind of transitioned into the scene I started this video where I was talking about the end scene where Himikawa was talking to Aqua about Kidashi and stuff like that. Yeah, that's pretty much the episode. Typically, we have a whole episode trying to do some kind of resolution in this kind of sense. But in Ocean of Ko, pretty much having this big, one of his big climactic scenes you've been waiting to see with Aqua, having that resolution down in the middle of the episode, montaging some things just to pick it up and have a cliffhanger at the end of that episode that's going to drive the rest of this season. Feel how you want to feel about it, but the definition of wasting no time. I'm not even going to sit here and be like, oh shit, the coach is that, it's that super fast pace of a series, but damn, they're ready to get into this shit. <laughs> and on that note, let's do that. If you watch this video, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Like this video for me, and I'll see y'all. Peace out. Subscribe to the Spin Move.